Hello everyone, my name is Muhammad Afifuddin. In this video, we will see how to design a beam for flexure. So first of all, in this type of problem, they will give a span or directly they will give effective span. They can give us the external loading or bending moment and material grade that is grade of concrete and grade of steel okay so this type of problem is to be solved according to this procedure so first procedure or first step is to determine design bending moment if bending moment is not given okay if bending moment that is factored bending moment or design bending moment is not given so firstly we have to assume the suitable depth and width and the depth of beam can be assumed as L by 12 to L by 15 okay and the width may be taken as 1 by 2 that is half to one third of the depth and this depth is assumed one okay afterwards we will check it then after assuming the depth and width we will calculate effective span so we can find out the effective span by taking center to center distance of the support or clear span plus effective depth and from those bo both values we have to take lesser value okay so effective span is equal to center to center of support or clear span plus small d whichever is less after that we will calculate self weight of the beam and we know that to find out the self weight or dead load we have to multiply volume by density of the material okay then we will determine total load and what is total load the self weight plus imposed load okay so after that our next step is to determine the design or factored load that is wu and we know that the we have to multiply total load by factor partial safety factor that is 1.5 therefore w is equal to w into 1.5 and after that we have to calculate factored moment that is mu okay and we know the formula for simply supported beam m is equal to wl square by 8 and for cantilever beam the formula for mu is equal to wu into l square upon 2 okay so this is the first step if bending moment is not given then after that our second step will be to find out x u max by d ratio there are three values of x u max by d ratio and we know that it is based upon the grade of steel and after that we will find out RU from this formula RU is equal to 0 0.36 into FCK into XU max by D in bracket 1 minus 0 0.42 XU max by D. After that, our third step is to determine the minimum depth required that is D required and we know the formula D required is equal to under root MU upon RU into B. What is B? B is the width of section. Then after that we will compare D required with the assumed value of effective depth and first if the assumed value of D that is the effective depth if it is greater than D required then our assumption is correct and we will provide the same value and we will calculate overall depth and if the assumed D that is effective depth is less than D required then we have to redesign the section and we have to repeat step number two and step number three okay so after that our fifth step will be to determine area of steel required and we know that if d assumed is greater than d required then our section will be under reinforced and we have to use mu is equal to 0 0.87 fy into ast into D in bracket 1 minus AST into FY upon BD into FCK and from this equation we will calculate area of steel okay if D assumed is equal to D required 
then our section will be balance section and we know the formula for balance section to calculate area of steel required ast is equal to mu upon 0.87 fy into d minus 0.42 xu max after that we will calculate the minimum area of steel which is given in the is code itself and after that we will compare minimum area of steel and area of steel required and we know that is code specifies that the minimum criteria for area of steel so if our area of steel required is less than minimum area of steel we have to redesign the section and if not that means our section is safe and after that we will assume some diameter of bar and we will calculate number of bar required okay so this is all the procedure of design of beam for flexure okay and note that if in the problem if they did not ask to check for any other that is check for deflection check for shear etc etc there is no need to calculate or to check that section okay so here we will take one example and here is the problem statement a reinforced concrete beam is simply supported on two masonry wall 230 mm thick and 6 meter apart center to center the beam is carrying an imposed load of 15 kN per meter design the beam for flexure only use m25 concrete and fe415 steel so here a beam which is simply supported is given and it when it is supported by a masonry wall of 230 mm and the center to center distance is given that is 6 meter okay and imposed load is 15 kN per meter in this problem it is already stated that we have to design the beam for flexure only okay and we and the grade of concrete is 25 and grade of steel is 415 okay so here is the given data the span that is lcc center to center distance is 6 meter fck that is characteristic strength of concrete is 25 newton per mm square characteristic strength of steel that is fy is equal to 415 newton per mm square and imposed load is 15 kN per meter so we will assume certain depth so for our first step will be the trial depth and we will take the criteria l upon 12 and here l is given as 6 meter that is 6000 mm upon 12 which gives us 500 mm okay so now we will assume a trial depth of 500 mm and width we know the criteria width should be half or one third of the total depth then we will take here b is equal to 250 mm effective cover we will assume 50 mm therefore our effective assumed depth will be equal to 500 minus 50 that is capital d minus effective cover which is equal to 450 mm then we will calculate effective span here we know the criteria the center to center of support is given already in the problem that is 6 meter or clear span plus effective depth so the clear span we know that clear span is equal to center to center distance minus width of the support so here width of support is given as 0.23 meter so 6 minus 0.23 which gives us the clear span is equal to 5.77 meter so clear span plus effective depth that is 5.77 our effective depth is 0.45 meter which gives us value 6.22 meter whichever is less okay so here the we will take the lesser value therefore effective span l is equal to 6 meter then our next step is to calculate the loading so first is the dead load or self weight we know the formula to calculate self weight volume into density and we will assume 1 meter for 1 meter okay so here we will calculate b into capital d capital d is 0.5 meter small b that is width is 0.25 meter 
and the density of concrete or we can say that unit weight of concrete is equal to 25 kN per meter cube. Okay. So after multiplying that we will get dead load is equal to 3.12 kN per meter. Imposed load is given in the problem itself that is 15 kN per meter and from that by adding dead load and imposed load our total load will be 18.125 kN per meter. Okay. Now we will multiply that total load by partial safety factor of 1.5. So our design factor load will be equal to 27.2 kN per meter. Now we will calculate the design moment or factored moment MU. Here the simply supported beam is given that is why we will take MU is equal to WU into L square upon 8. So after putting these value in the formula, we will get answer MU is equal to 122.3 kN meter or we can say that 122.3 into 10 is to 6 Newton mm. Okay. So this was our first step. Now we will move to our second step to determine axiomax by D ratio and RU. And for Fe415 grade of steel, we know that axiomax by D ratio is equal to 0.48. And we know the formula of RU 0.36 FCK into axiomax upon D in bracket 1 minus 0.42 axiomax upon D. So after putting the axiomax by D ratio that is 0.48 in the formula, we will get the answer RU is equal to 3.45. Now our third step is to find out the minimum depth required. We know the formula D required is equal to under root MU upon RU into B. B is width of the section. So after putting this value in the formula that is under root 122.3 into 10 to 6 upon 3.45 into 250 we got the answer that is the minimum depth required is 376 mm and which is less than our assumed value of effective depth that is 450. So hence our section is safe and we can say that our section is okay. As here D required is less than D assumed therefore the section is to be designed as an under reinforced section. Okay. So now we will assume the cover is equal to 20 mm and diameter of stirrups is equal to 8 mm and diameter of main bar is equal to 20 mm. So therefore or we can directly take the effective cover. Okay. So here we have taken the separate value for clear cover diameter of stirrup and main bar. Therefore our effective depth will be total depth minus cover minus diameter of stirrups minus half of diameter of main bar that is 500 minus 20 minus 8 minus 20 upon 2 which is equal to 462 mm. Now we will calculate the most important thing that is area of steel required. As our section is under reinforced section so we will use the this formula mu is equal to 0 0.87 fy into ast into d in bracket 1 minus ast fy upon fck into bd. MU we have calculated here 122.3 into 10 is to 6. FY is 415. AST we have to calculate. D value that is effective depth is 462 mm. Small b that is width is 250 mm. And after calculating this equation we will get AST required is equal to 833 mm square. Okay. Now we will check the minimum area of steel. So we know the formula for minimum area of steel is equal to 0 0.85 into B into D upon Fy. So 0 0.85 into 250 into 462 upon 415. The minimum area of steel is equal to 236 mm square which is less than the area of steel required. Therefore our section is safe and our section is okay. So our last step is to find out the number of bars. We know that number of bars is equal to AST upon area of one bar. Okay. So here we have considered the diameter of bar as 20 mm square. Area of steel required is 833 mm square. 
Therefore, 833 upon 5 by 4 into 20 square, which is equal to 2.65 bars. So we will round it and we will provide 3 bars of 20 mm diameter. So here we have provided AS area of steel, which is equal to 3 bars of 20 mm diameter. So 3 into area of that bar, so 3 into pi by 4 into 20 square. So our AST provided is 942 mm square. Okay. So here we have completed our design of singly reinforced beam for flexure problem. Okay. Thank you.